Hello again. In our next meeting, which was shifted from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., I hope everybody found our room and our session, but that will also be available online. Some things which we do not have to be advertised, and you come in throngs, and there are people from whom we won't like to learn more. And AI is, is one of the most fascinating and hot pressing topics of our day. Jakub Ben is again with us in Film Spring Open, and uh, I'm leaving the floor to Jakub Ben. Thank you. I'm so uh, I'm astonished that so many people came. I'm really um, thankful and glad. I I was expecting two three people or maybe an empty room after the, the, the sudden change of the of the time. I hope that I will be able to entertain you. Also, those people who know something about AI. A few words about me. Shortly presenting myself, I th I'm here for the seventh or eighth time. Once I was um, here as a participant, the several times I was uh, having lectures here, once I had uh, classes for uh, with Unreal, Unreal Engine, for the, for, and I even employed one person to my team. That was very fruitful even for me. If I were to say who I am, it's very difficult to define it. Uh, I am project leader, I'm a team leader since, since ever. I started with CD Projekt and Vigmin, where I was responsible for all the, so directing all the uh, combat scenes, animations and uh, add-ons. And then I left CD Projekt and I started, uh, and I st started on my own path. Here are several projects that I worked on, so several, yeah, 12 of them actually. Uh, on which I had a chance to work uh, on the Witcher as a CD project, of course, and the other, and the, all other ones are under the banner of Real Time Warriors, a um, company I set up with my with a friend of mine. And in reality, this year in May, we we and we suspended Real Time Warrior, Warriors and we started to produce our own game. The title of the game is not uh, revealed yet, but the name of the studio is Dark Passenger. We are re recruiting. You can enter our website and see what's happening there. Um, in, in short, we're creating um, um, a game in feudal Japan with a certain twist. But we met here uh, to discuss the, the AI revolution in creative industries. It is. In, it's this. This is such a broad topic that. Each every single point could be developed into an individual lecture, so I will be pretty quick. Pretty quick. I'm sorry to the interpreter; he will be probably have to do a very, uh, it, it be very fast. So I have like 80 slides. I have one slide per minute, so I'm already behind the schedule. So let me go very quickly to the point. Uh, just as an introduction to the people who do not know very well what AI is, but we all know that it's artificial intelligence. Well, these are systems of machines which uh, um, which work like human intelligence, uh, uh, working on tasks based on successively completed information. Uh, AI um, is a very frequently met uh, um, uh, um, uh, uh, term, especially in generated uh, image, images, as, which is a hot, hot topic. Uh, but many people say AI is much a broader thing. It's, uh, it's only, it, these are only neural networks. It's a much a broader uh, um, term. But these, for, these for formulations are here for people to communicate and that's so that people not related to the topic wouldn't know what they're looking at. Because this is, is, this is AI. There are also other several, several uh, you have machine learning, deep learning, and neural network. These are stacked from the uh, I would say the, from this uh, from top to bottom machine learning is the um, are the algorithms which improve themselves by through exposition to data the most um, common example is that let's say we have a um, we have a figure which whom we want to watch we we push it we push it he falls down he falls down we do it a million times until he finally learns how to put his legs so that he doesn't fall down and after uh, um, after 10 million iterations he starts to walk uh, not very well but he doesn't need to understand the human being he doesn't need to understand our um, uh, senses of, of sight of hearing it's a purely mathematical thing or maybe the, the start of a spacex rocket 
if you start one, 1,000 times in simulation and it will you know, explode maybe on the 1,000 first time, it will not explode in the Gandhi orbit, orbit until it learns. And deep learning, which is a subcategory of machine learning, is creating neural networks that are supposed to improve uh, the understanding the process is natural for human brains, just like um, uh, speech recognition or image recognition. It's something that in, something that in artificial intelligence would not learn. It would have if if it had uh, a certain personality. If if it became an independent being, maybe probably it would not be interesting for them because it's a very human thing. So how we understand the world when for us a certain image is acceptable and we believe it and something's not and when not deep learning is to and is for the artificial intelligence to learn to uh, discern it and to learn from it neural network re refers to machine learning and deep learning is a system used for processing information the construction of which are based on the functioning of the bi biological fragments of neural ne of actual neural networks so just like neural network in our brains we build a, a certain network you can see you can think it's abstract but everybody can build a network like this having in internet and um, using uh, google cloud you can create your own uh, artificial intelligence in a sense that you create a neural network and teach something at the, or use red neural networks. It's uh, extremely complicated. I don't do that. But I, I, I have friends who toy with that with some interesting results. So here uh, I listed things which are, let's say, tools which are most important. Uh, currently from the perspective of authors they have the biggest impact on uh, what we can do but also the the they all they also have the biggest negative impact on various people because when I'm talking ever about AI revolution that might sound maybe um, exaggerated because the revolution in my understanding is not some Quite often we hear about the, revo the price revolution, this revolution, that revolution in some industries. But uh, this is in fact a huge change. People have so get some new tools, some very interesting tools, for example, revolutionary ones. But they, it improves their uh, improves their work. It gives them more uh, flexibility, more independence. However, it, however, it does not cause people to lose jobs or that they have to change professions or they have to change the way of thinking or their of what they're used to because with the new technology you cannot compete there's no way uh, you cannot approach it i'm talking about revolution because this year things started to happen which are removing jobs for people and some people become obsolete but those people are there they learn right now some just start their education not even knowing that their job will disappear when they will finish they will graduate because ai will do the, the whole job for them and it will do it better it, it will do it cheaper and faster so people who pay for those things will prefer to it to be made by ai nothing personal so to speak i will I will go very quickly through all these things. I will stop around here and image generation because that is the subject that uh, which is the hottest one. Uh, there, there are most interesting things you can see there. It changes our way, way of thinking the most. So if you see those things and you hear about them, I believe that people who do not know, not, do not know what that is and they had no contact with that. This is really mind blowing. This is something impossible. If you don't know about that, if you see that, that's absolutely impossible, incredible. It makes no sense, but it is, it works. And I will be talking about that at length in a while because I'm running a studio and to spoil, spoiler it a bit, I, I, I cancelled two, two positions uh, replacing people with AI. I will, why? I will show it to you. Okay, let's go. AI content generation. I thought that I will start with this one because uh, uh, this is generating content. Not many people will realize that when you read 
articles in and on websites. You read articles which were not written by humans, and there are algorithms which which uh, f um, can discover that. But you can also see certain patterns which are repeated in how it is written, and it works exactly in the same way. AI. AI was reading a lot of what should real journalists were writing, and it learned to write in the same way. There's a lot of systems and program and software which is available at the browser level, which allow us to generate any text you wish. And I've also met text, encountered text which generates scripts for the movies, for 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 novels. They create the characters, the plot, and this is quite good too. It's a good point of departure. We're not not starting with an empty, uh, with a blank slate we can read it through we can uh, we have the story plot I, uh, I you do not have to you have taglines headlines emails articles blog posts Facebook ads product descriptions but I I see the most the are the are the journalist articles I we have a lot of uh, um, information about health about some sort of an, a medicine whatever gets you you get in some promoted content to read it and it's it's about everything we read it but yeah we have to eat healthy yeah of course your, your liver gets bad when you do this and that this is not written by humans anymore at some point it might happen that the whole websites just like WP on it or on it not the big ones because some of them would would, would like to retain people writing the um, uh, the articles but many websites would like to create content like that so that it's there so it's always on time because AI is never late okay moving on image upscaling it was something that was available to one year two years ago I must say that I learned about that pretty late but when I used that for the first time um, my my brain melted away look at this picture it looks like fake it looks as if this image on the left hand side was on the right hand side but somebody um, made the quality worse to just to show for example where do you take this uh, earring from yeah but this is how AI works it it sort of thinks in inverted commas and it tries to define what is in this blurred image and a moment when it happened a lot was when my fiance was was making um uh, preparing um work for a competition she she used, she used some render VR. she couldn't render um an image of that quality that was required for the competition so that the, she would be ready for the deadline which was um, midnight it was she was doing that at that moment so okay I said uh, render that in in low quality we'll put it in topaz and we'll see what happens and topaz came up with everything for example the carpet on which you cannot see any texture he came up with the idea that it should be soft he, he added uh, details to wood for example the, that is the first shocker and from that moment I'm using this program regularly this software regularly for many things for example for texture we buy some textures let's say they're a bit old they're ten, from 10 years before and but somebody uh, created a nice set of texture because he went to the to forest or some other place and he has some un unique textures and I can uh, blow it up and and make it uh, to let uh, 16 times I can zoom 16 times there's some of course the AI somewhere always it tries to guess this guessing is not always perfect so I would say with every month not every year every month it's getting better and better another example and this, this is an authentic example this is what it looks like apart from texture and uh, photographies but also 2d graphics work very very well some let's say you find a very nice graphics graphic or it's an extract from so some graphic from a great artist but you heard don't get you don't get a better quality because it's from 15 16 years ago you can get topaz and you can get that detail out um, it, it might it will be of such quality that it, it could be like a poster and you can print it and put it on your on on your on your wall okay DLSS is deep learning super sampling this refers to video games so you might not be very interested in that however this is a great revolution in uh, video gaming because instead of rendering 4k quality we say we tell Sablo render full HD and in real time 
AI will be upscaling that to 4K. So it's not that like in Topaz, the previous program, because you were waiting for each frame, you would wait, um, we would wait five seconds. Here we need, let's say he, here we need 106 FPS and that changes everything because people have weaker computers, weaker RTX cards, but the, and the, they have better button games and they can cheat the reality using, using DLSS because the technology allows that. The next thing, image restoration. Another example of how AI can, un can understand what is happening in, in places which do not, uh, in, which are scratched, which are broken, which are non-existent, because it knows what the human face looks like and it can understand it. And it's, it's he can su supplement, it, not with sampling as he would have a time stamp in Photoshop, like a stamp in Photoshop, but it, it can, uh, guess what it would look like we don't know if, if it's if it was real but it's good enough we can really uh, correct every picture every movie every film um, because you, there are some like passive systems where you can uh, improve individual images but you have also tools which allow you to restore full movies not only restore but color them too it's enough to add let's say you, you if it's black and white it will not guess by itself but it can continue your coloring so processes which used to be very very costly and time consuming uh, are very becoming very easy ai denoiser from what i know future cameras for filmmakers some of some of brands are already working with an nvidia to have to, NV to have an nvidia card which has a tensor core a special processor for um, ai which allows to denoise the uh, the image because in the noise a broadly understood denoising of uh, of an image is you you try to guess the so software tries to guess or average out or soften smoothen the image and you lose a lot of detail it becomes much very much uh, um, plasticine like the ai denoiser looks at, at previous um, at previous frames it tries to understand what is under the noise here the example is very hardcore because you can see on those uh, cat rules how denoise how noised is the o original uh, image and how it what it looks like denoised this applies to different rendering engines if in, in the future it will also relate to the video image when that will happen um, the, you will be able to shoot in any directions from any cam in any conditions from any ca camera if it's for passive let's say after some it can be done either passively or actively when it's already in the camera and you can get the improved image live i will tell you very quickly that it's another powerful revolution in video games and re revolutions but in, in having a huge impact on the um, movie making life and movie making condition because because unreal engine and other engines that uh, render things in real time until certain point until the point of uh, when this technology looked like it didn't look well enough to use such an image in a movie as a background for example because it did not look authentic enough you could see that it's game like it's a video game like it's a second hand lower quality and so classically you would do offline rendering so like big publishing house like goodbye kansas or platish image they would do that however right now many movies are going to virtual production about which you probably heard there's a special stage build with oled screens where you have um, in real time render is displayed from unreal engine and it looks like photorealistic it looks photorealistic because it's ray traced which means um, there are um, rays of light which reflect and they they sh they, they make this a uh, very um, uh, realistic lighting because that was the, the missing link ray tracing in real time is still impossible however it can be cheated by the noiser the image in the real time if you turn off the noiser in unreal looks exactly like the, more real than this it it i mean it's more noised than here and it's you you can't imagine how noised it is and you can get the and the, this denoiser can get the real image from from this from this sort of picture and this is how nvidia scientists went around the problem instead of doing the better better cards they they circumvented the problem 
by creating great algo AI algorithms. Interpolation of fr frame interpolation. This is something to which I need to show you a short video. There will be three cases. I didn't have a chance to make this presentation pressy. Okay. You probably dealt somehow with a plugin plug like Twixtor for After Effects, which allowed you to create an interpolation, which means frames between frames. But it was always full of artifacts, which are also uh, present here, but this is old video. We have newer technologies. You could, you would be able to see with this guy that something will start to... Oh, there's something happened with his uh, skate already here. I don't know. Half, half a year passed and we already have better technology. But with AI interpolation, 480 FPS, super slow-mo, you do not have to have this phantom flex to, for the slow-mo to look good if you plan this well. Some materials would look better and some would, would look worse. You know, so there are guys who are, who are shooting things in slow-mo and they took this material and they made an even bigger slow-mo out of that. This allows the authors to sort of follow their imagination to some oniric or some streamlike shots. Let's see that too. I mean, we'll 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 really really cheat a, a normal uh, like a, com a common viewer or common audience because they would think we we made that in Phantom Flex. AI background removal and replacement. That's very basic stuff. All already in the web browser. You have software that will allow you, with at some minor fee or free of free of charge, to remove the background. You just you just um, show where the uh, where the character is and which where the, where the background is, taking into account all the nuances, uh, individual threads of her. The, the the character knows that it's a human, that it, the human has hair, and that the hair should not be removed. Background replacement. This is crazy. And I wouldn't say that this is a plugin for After Effect. These are just uh, like th these are half a year old papers. So these are softs which are being produced right now, and there will be some monetization of the softs, and we'll see how it works. But we we put in a different background. You, you can have a, um, a photography. It will animate the photography. Um, sampling what's happening on the real uh, on the real recording so so the original version is on the right hand side on the left is like the arctic or antarctic it's it's a photography really object removal until now it was not so easy right now it's enough to mark the object AI will remove it from the from the shot. It will see where it went, and it will fill in all the. Uh, it will remove it every everywhere, not requiring any additional data from us. It can be a human being. It can be a moving uh, shot where the surfer is uh, is floating on the waves. So we can remove the surfer, and uh, it will not be discernible. Deep fake. You know what the deep fake is, I believe. It developed so much uh, since we all saw that for the first time that it's used professionally. Uh, for example, in, in Boba Fett, uh, uh, Luke Skywalker was made with deep fa deep fake, whereas in uh, Star Wars Rogue One, they invested they invested in the real creation of digital double the, of uh, of the actor, and this character th these characters can never attain such a level of realism as deepfake which is practically free of charge i mean you have one operator which works on deepfake few experiments and in one weekend you can make several shots 
which would look very well. The, an interesting uh, example of this is our comedy shots with Tom Cruise. Uh, right, please write deep fake Tom Cruise. There's a real uh, treasure trove of those films. When, if I showed that to m to my dad, he would not tell that if it's step deep fake and not Tom Cruise. And he would here I would want to add that deep fakes are worth using for many things, not only to change the the face of one person to another. But here you can see below if. Uh, if you do not like the expression of the actress in some shot, we can shot her with a different facial expression and just f change her facial expression in the shot and nobody will will notice that. It's as if she was filmed with a different uh, expression on her face. Moving on, it's still deep fake, but here it's even more advanced because AI starts to uh, understand better 2D uh, images and it can make a make a 2D object uh, look 3D like and to give it characteristics which are it is not a normal plasticine where your face is stretched over something and we're moving and this uh, and the face stretches ever uh, this face but when we blink when we do strange things with our eyes they look uh, authentically because uh, AI knows what the what the eye how uh, eye behaves like what the uh, the, eye, the human eye behaves like this is a model which is available to everybody but it is not a soft you have to take into account that what the things that I'm showing to you are things that you have to uh, compile on github by yourself uh, generates you by yourself calculate something on your graphic card um, or in Google Cloud you have to uh, put some sweat into it however now right now we have such a plethora of soft that take that and put it in some commercial clothes that very soon it will be available to everyone especially that TikTok is is attempting to give this technology for free so that people can do deep fakes as they wish which is a bit crazy a deep fake detector because deep fake are increasingly used for political reasons propaganda reasons to to spread lies to uh, to, to to dupe uh, like a, com a common Joe, uh, a common person, it's very easy easy to cheat the simple people. They would certainly d believe deep fakes. So many uh, governmental agency would want to have control over that, to, especially to check if such deep fake re took place and re remove quickly such things, or at least know about that. Fake speakers. That's an interesting thing. Here you have an example of a of a woman who um, um, uh, allowed to use her image. She was and AI controls wholly that avatar. You can see it on the screen, just like a TV host. And in case of of this uh, this company, Copymatic, they have text to audio. You can write any text, and she will read that in a natural way about this audio I will tell you about. She will read it in a very natural way. It's not um, Ivona. This, this is deep learning, which learned the way the, uh, and understood the person humans uh, read, you know, with all the pauses, with all the gulps, with all the small nuances that um, make us and uh, feel that the world that, that the voice is natural or artificial so the first one is generating voice of uh, audio and generating of expression and body movement based on based on the audio that was built based on the text so we have a woman which will who will tell us exactly what we uh, write we, we can change that voice do some maybe somebody will be creating channels on YouTube where we'll have a host like that there will be um, websites which will you you could be able to blend the genes of people to see what will work out to have our own tv host why then pay someone if when ai does it for for a small fee sub subscription fee a voice generator this is the crazy stuff because not many people know about that there are there is a software that allows us to to fake and the voice of any person whom whose voice the samples we submitted to the neural network in this case in uberduck uh, 
and people supply them in the form of helmets. So, uh, for example, how here we have how nine thousand the AI um, uh, copies what what they do. It's it's not really human. It makes such pauses, and then we have not only the manner in which. Uh, the voice is uh, the sound of the voice, but it's also the, the, the manner of speech which is being reflected. We can write the te text uh, text to synthesize. So quite often we have a diffusion, or uh, in other words, the synthesis in AI, because this is what the, what is the name of this phenomenon that that take takes place. We write the text, and it's being changed to this voice. And here we have reference audio. It's, in, it's even more interesting. We can read something with our own voice and AI with the voice of a different person, but keeping our tempo, our way of manner of speech, our all augmented voice, taking everything into account, as we said that, will say, say that with a different voice. And that's incredibly interesting. The only thing I miss is that it's in real time so that I could, I don't know, on Discord, I could, I could uh, impersonate other people. Motion capture. That's a very powerful thing. You can see that there are motion capture studios which are still being created. There are several leading ones in the uh, in Pol in Europe. We have Bounce, like in Warsaw. I use their services. I've been using them and will use them in in a few months. Motion ca optical motion capture. The, for those who don't know, it's a system of cameras which re records um, infrared light, which um, reflect from the dots that are on the costume of the actor, because there are, the cameras are everywhere around. Let's say there are 64 of them. They're able to precisely, down to one millimeter, they're able to precisely define where this point is in the tree 3D space. It's all, it's all, and then you, you connect the, a skeleton to those points and we have a natural move. Now one camera costs from 10 to $30,000, so the cost is considerable. Of course, there are cheaper uh, systems which you can um, buy. Of course, they have lower quality and lower precision and you can pay less for them. There are also various solutions which I also test myself, like magnetic um, magnetic costumes which you put on yourself. So it's not an optical one, but you have sensors on yourself which were based on electromagnetic field, and we can uh, read the movement. But the, a very good X-Sense um, costume costs, uh, I don't know, 80,000 zlotys or something like that. So it is still uh, too high of a price, and many creators and authors of animation who create their shorts, they use ready animations, or or they animate that by hand, so like a keyframe. But I had a chance to test, and there are many solutions created, which are, um, some some are in the form of papers, some are already in the form of applications, which work online or cloud. We put in, uh, which consists in, it's enough, the image from one video, for the AI to understand what's happening there, how we move. And even though the majority of those which are uh, available right now have in them a lot of potential, but the precision is rather low, I saw already those that with high um, resolution and with two cameras, they don't have to be video cameras. It can be even a phone camera, phone camera with a high resolution, like a real 4K. We have two such phones on a on a tripod, and we can on a sub, and we can we can uh, shoot. Um, a, 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 baseball field with the baseball players and the AI will will change all of them into skeletons like we see here and we can make animations based on, on that as they're playing basketball. It will be very precise and the AI will never put a human being in a position which is not natural because it saw so many films so it, that it knows what is natural for humans and uh, uh, what is not what is not natural. What if we do not need to record the movement of anyone? If we just could write what movement that would be, and that movement would would uh, take place, because if AI knows the range of human movement, okay, I would like to write, okay, let it let it 
let it person walk slowly forward, let it move on, let it in, get inclined, let it bend over and pick up something. There are models, it's not an available self, there are models in which that, that's how it works. You have a prompt written somewhere, a text which will which is the input. And also this is not animated, I'm just showing it to, to you in a rigid way, but this character in the best way it can uh, performs a given um, uh, action. Here we have variability. We, we can we can give one we can give one topic, and but count that it will be um, happen in one way, and we can because you can skip rope in many different way, and AI does not need to know which one is best for for us. So it will create a number of variation, and we will select the one that suits us the best. This is a fresh thing. A week or two ago. They came up with generating 3D models. It is something that was created by NVIDIA and it will enter open source. I don't know if it's not open source already, so it should be everybody, available to everybody for free. Generating 3D models based on uh, images. There's no application to, for me to know if it's, um, if it's image or text, but the assumption is that we have the picture of our motorcycle um, we put in our uh, a picture and we get a 3D model. Uh, sorry, well, here we've got a clay render. You can see the clay render. You can see it's it's a it's a certain approximation. These are the models that we would like to see from from a closer. But that's only one first step towards the moment when we will be able to create almost any 3D objects for the needs of our VF uh, VF VFX. Okay, we just need a concrete car. It will get rendered in 10 minutes. And the interesting part is that the best website, the, the best channel that you can follow in YouTube, it's called Two Minute Papers. It's it's a guy who who's presenting a new technology or new paper. That's why it's called papers. He he's referring to 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 papers, the first scientific. Um, um, proof that somebody came up with something, somebody discovered something, you can see at those papers. And sometimes th those two papers from the moment th when they are created to the moment when the soft is being created, sometimes a lot of time, can, uh, a lot, it, it takes years for the, for the soft to be created, sometimes it takes just a year, and we can see certain solutions. Um, um, Again, so now we finally made it to the most interesting part, image generation. This is the brain melter. This is something that if you don't know anything about it, you will be in shock. I listed here all those that I used at least once, and I must say that from the top to, to, to the bottom, the, the frequency of use, even though a stable the, the, the diffusion and mid journey are sort of uh, mm, the challenging each other because uh, at the they are at the same level. Image generation can be used in two ways. Well, the one way is out of text, so we write what we want AI to generate. So let's say um, a sinking ship or a Titanic, which which mm, sort of hits um, a whale instead of an iceberg. Well, you can come up with anything, but let's say we're creative. If we have a good feeling and we need some concrete image for precise uh, goals. We, we want to have a background for a fantasy project. We want illustrations or for for the book um, or for or a poster for the book. Or maybe we don't can't imagine some some monster that we want to have or some deformation on a human being. Or maybe we need some mood board. We want the AI to suggest a mood board for us. Some let's say get inspired by Hitchcock movies, but make a com contemporary scene in a garage or in IKEA store. And then AI tries to understand what is the mood be behind and uh, colors and, and palette behind the um, Hitchcock films. And it will go to IKEA store and then he will put it on and, and, and put things together. Now, first, I will show you what I started from. And that was the first part, the, the, the first half of this year just to demonstrate how much it changed over the last several months. This is an example of Midjourney. In Midjourney I wrote, I'm sorry I didn't uh, write it down, but I, th it, I think Dishonored Ninja, only two words. That was very lame because you can write, I mean you can write a whole, a whole the, the more 
the words you put in, the more you will get out of it. The more the more you you generate the text, that you can you can improve your text and see see the the outputs. And the Zonert impacts were the, the first generation was the, these four pictures on top. When I saw them, I said, okay, there is somewhere there is some picture, there's some idea in that, but I do not understand what I see. It's a very strange characters. Uh, these faces barely hold them together. But I like the first one. I, I said, well, not I didn't really like it. I said, Let's explore this. And the mid journey allows you to create versions of the images that we like. So I said, do, prepare four versions of the first one that they liked. And here are the examples of the four versions, four different versions. And then I decided, no, no, no. Yes, and here there is a potential. This face is more interesting. There is a certain threat. There is a certain horror in that, in that, uh, in those eyes. And I said, upscale it. I, I wanted to. He uh, he upscaled it, and this is what I got. Uh, it's tr it's not really get good. The face is falling apart. Everything is blurred. It looks very fishy. However, for a person who knows how to work with digital painting and likes digital painting well i'm a i'm an art director i work with people i improve other people's things i'm um, i go i all i graduated from the from the finance academy i'm drawing a lot of storyboards myself i do have a skill i'm not a master maybe but for me this is a loss i can see here the you know the 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 texture of the of the dagger I can see the slide behind the character. This is everything I need, like all, all the colors, palette, color palette, all the. Um, all, I started to see things that I liked, and I decided, okay, I will check the time, how much it will take for me to start from this and do some art myself. And bam, I did some improvement. As you can see, this character changed a lot from woman into a man. Because AI images are not big, the result on the close-up was, as you can see, at, up there. But I put it in Topaz to improve the quality and bam. But Topaz looked at this and, and Topaz is trying to discern if it's a human being or not. So he started to make lines as if I was drawing that. Oh, that's okay. I would prefer that that to be treated as a human being, but it, I do not. I cannot influence that. After the upscale. Well, the overpaint took me about two hours, so I must tell you that if I were to draw this illustration with coming up with all those details from the scratch, with coming up with this character, how, uh, how they stand, what they look like, what they, how they dress, it would took me two to three full days of work. And maybe I would not get that to that effect because I'm not as good in, uh, in terms of textures. I can sample textures, I can uh, do, um, change things in liquify, but I'm not really great to do it from the scratch. But I could spend two hours and make a fine piece of art, which in my view is good enough so that I can, I could put it as a concept art of the game or, um, or a character for a, for a game cards or maybe even the cover of a book. Another example here, I made a longer prompt, Cyberpunk Girl, Cyberpunk Girl in Yellow Heights. And this is the image that I got generated. I um, I'm showing you only three to see what's happening here. We're still talking about the first half of this year. There's a lot of junk. There's a lot of noise in in many in some places. This character doesn't. You you see the shin here. I don't know. It's it's front or back. We don't know. But the composition, this this mood and the colors. Yeah, I, they worked. And I said, OK, I'll explore it on. Bam. I changed the composition a bit from uh, from square to a vertical composition. I added some elements like the Blade Runner car. I adapted some characters. I decided to, to make it look more like humans. I made other things more mm, effective. And when I was, I spent four hours. After four hours, I felt a bit tired. I decided that's enough. It's finished. And uh, the, the last example from my mm, uh, portfolio is the prompt was it was generated like this. This looks quite interesting, very creepy. 
It looks like uh, like body exhumation, but I decided this character to be more coherent, more readable, something that you could use. And I, it took me about three three hours of overpaint in Photoshop. I'm using basic brushes, liquify to improve certain characteristic elements, and I put the texture in the background. But I got it to the level which is satisfying for me. And I'm a person who has very little time, and I like to create interesting content. And for me personally, AI is a is a door to doing something myself and to feel nice drive. My emotions go up. I'm happy. I've done something interesting. I'm I'm agitated. Before that, it would not be possible for me to 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 paint an art for three days because I would need to end uh, with sketch. And three months later, we put a prompt, we get something like this. You do not have to paint anything. Suddenly, AI understood what are the problems with the faces because the authors uh, saw them and said, like, hundreds of thousands are generating arts and they are not happy with faces. So they focused on, on faces. They said, AI, Please concentrate on the on the faces because you're not really doing well. So the AI concentrated on, on faces and boom, that looks perfect. That looks a person. If I ordered some uh, this at some at, at an art with an artist, I would pay two thousand pilen or more per piece for somebody to come up with it to show me some sketches. However, I can generate that within a second. These are not minutes. These are seconds. I put in a. Uh, I put in a, um, uh, some words and within seconds I, I can get variations. So let's say I'm not happy with the one on the left hand side, but I can click variations, do it on, move it, move. I, I don't even need to say uh, what he should do. I'm just repeating that, that the one button and I get effect after effect after, after effect. Now I'll show you. There will be a lot of slides I will be clicking over. The, the, here are some examples. All this is generated from by AI. This, is not real. None of those things. Those are not really photographs. Those are not photo manipulations. This is all AI generated. You will not find photographies like that. This is not even sampled. It comes from all the images that AI watched. So if somebody was against AI, it's too late. It already learned. You can't say, no, 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 d d d don't, don't allow it to watch. No, it watched everything. You're done. It's done. The caricatures animals, we can make hi hybrids, we can do a combination of a, of a cheetah with, with a chimpanzee or other gorilla. We have a cat. I mean, let's say we have a cat, it's ready, but you want to have it to have a little hat and for it to have a little walking stick and, uh, and a monocle. And you can add this, and it will be photorealistic as if it were it. Totally fictional characters. Tell me that you would not believe that nobody is that somebody didn't saw it. It looks like a, it looks like a doll, because it's enough to, to write a prompt in writer. It's look for look for muppets or puppets. You know what is a puppet? Yes. Okay. So prepare a character for me like uh, Sesame Street, but in a jacket like this, or in the, in the cap in the blue cap, and let's see what happens we can create not only single individual characters but we can create whole scenes if we describe the character we can add running through the field blah 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 and see what happens you can do the field out of cotton wax or what no, sorry cotton buds or whatever this looks like photographs of like some, some some strange things made out of uh, mm, peanut butter and jelly. This looks photorealistic. You c cannot criticize that. I would. It's not f only for the layman. It's about me. It's about you. I don't know if you would, if you saw something like that. If you, if you didn't know that AI can generate images, you would not be able to say that. Oh, you did something in Photoshop. That some. You would think that somebody would cut those uh, vegetables and it, it put them around, but. The level of complication of what AI does is one thing, but also the lighting, 
look how it reflects from different materials, how it reflects from the bread differently from the peanut butter, that the peanut butter has can have different textures, that jelly is translucent. And it, it's mind-blowing. What's happening here? Uh, the, the crane the crane out of uh, coffee uh, cream is uh, you know it's it's, it's really mind-blowing architecture you can really like free your mind here this also becomes very practical let's say we have an architect who really his ideas run out he might look or he might prop AI with his favorite words with his favorite authors and we'll go get in a while to the moment when AI, that, that AI can can differentiate somebody's style. So let's say, okay, draw me, but in the style of Beksinski, for example. And the, the AI will do it because they saw all the paintings of Beksinski. He knows all the characteristic traits and palettes and composition of Beksinski, and that's how it's going to be done. And I, I mean, we'll judge it in a while. I will, I will get that shortly. Interiors realistic objects I hope I, I don't need to repeat to you these things do not exist it's a fiction material study if so you can see the AI understands how the material works you can say that it's I don't know dented it's um, it's bent it's it's uh, and the AI understand what the light would look like surreal forms this is something where you can really f deep dive into this and get lost in this when you start to do things like that because we do not understand them these shapes the way that it, they bent they look organically they look like something natural like reality but they are not and quite often our brain is pulled in that direction it's a certain darkness which is which we do not understand it's incomprehensible but it's attractive it attracts us and when you s start to use prompts which use surreal, surreal it's enough to add the word surreal and real, like the ai frees its fantasy the things are so interesting there are no limits abstract abstraction simple forms that's also something somebody would could ask about uh, how does it deal with simple forms like simple geometrical shapes um, circles isometrics uh, some banal it, it works as as well as with anything else it's just the question of a prompt anime I put in anime because I'm an anime fan myself I was interested in if I will find something interesting wow it, this looks like examples of like top-notch cinematic um, films of anime here more realistic characters in general all the things uh, are not mine I'm trying to add authors on the right hand side I, I collected them from the website I showed you some of my things on the before I will show you some more in a while the cars look how well it it keeps the geometry of those cars it it, it does not destroy the geometry it just not but it can do it can warp them only when you use a special algorithm and getting right prompts we get to interesting uh, results i'm showing you the best results but if you leave this room you will go to mid mid journey or stable diffusion these are the most uh, accessible for humans the programs and you start on discord you will start to prompt and see what happens then you will be a bit disappointed because it would occur that it's like big pile of stinking poo it does not look good that something is wrong and what there are galleries which are, were great things and you say what's so great in that i mean we can always try somebody else's prompt and see change copy that prompt change something in there and suddenly we have really interesting pictures the first thing is important to understand it to start from simple words to add the next words because each one of those ai's have has it has its own characteristics in, in which we can communicate with the AI because it, it does not only take the prompt it can say yes make a yellow horse in a in a blue cap but for me the most important thing for the is for the horse to be yellow than it that it would be in, in the cap 
uh, if you yes, it will be the effect will be different from what you would uh, um, you would normally you would get if you make something different priority. For example, Dali, uh, another software allows you to mask certain spheres, which is also crazy. So let's say we have certain image we like, but we don't. Let's say we don't like the ear earrings or the or the crown or the covers on the wheels. We can say that. Um, the same picture but with different uh, wheel covers and the program will try to do that for us here a bit of random things without categories so that you can see what are the, how people do some interesting stuff normally if you would or want to record as you, you wanted or to order such such posters it would pay a lot and there are not many people who do something like that in such a quality okay we got to something very interesting things that you have seen so far so much these are uh, text to image and now we have image to image let's say you have an idea for a picture but you can't draw too well and that's the best that you can get but you think if I could draw, if I could do the digital painting, that would look great. And that now gives something like that to stable diffusion. That that's what you get. And I mean, these are like seconds. And I click once again. I don't like it. I click on, click on. I don't like this. I don't like that. I can put myself inside. I can put my photo inside and change myself, change characteristics in myself. Another thing. Interesting, isn't it? Oh, and all. Who would think? Architecture. Here, for example, it's a game, the walking game, the, the walking dead. Uh, on the left hand side, that character is from the game. And uh, somebody wanted to know what this uh, character would look like if they were a real person. Boom. Here we have the uh, characters of the from the game Fallout, Fallout 2. It's a very nice game, but an old one. And one of the users of Reddit users decided to those pixeled characters. He decided to do the stable diffusion and how the stable diffusion will more interpret it as a more realistic characters. And this is the example. They are a bit cramped, but I think you see what it's all about. Here are even older games. Of course, the question is why? What for? But why not? Because, for example, I don't know if you know the game Age of Empires, and at some point Ubisoft made a remade remake of that game, or remaster of that game, and they showed to what extent the the units have changed to how they look better, and they were an object of derision from the players because they they wanted full price for the game, which is m minimally minimally improved, and the fans. Uh, were able to do it to, to do it much better and with stable diffusion they would be able to do like do it way way better and that was my experiment because i do many things with ai i'm trying to be um, re like a student of ai i'm putting everything on my facebook i publish that on on the groups ai generative art and some others and this is a project which i made maybe a, a month ago but i'd never published it i didn't publish it yet so you're the first people in the world who see that I like the history of art. I like classical painting. Maybe not that I'm sitting uh, in the books and I'm, uh, but I, uh, I'm looking uh, looking at it all the time. But I do return to classical painting, and I wanted to see how this actress would look like, painted by different artists from different epochs, from different eras of classical painting. Pierre Auguste Renoir, Vincent Van Gogh, Gustav Klimt. Manet, Cezanne, Matisse. If you know their style, I mean, it's it's bullseye.
Uh, so it seems she's uh, she's she's she was deathless. She went through all the uh, uh, eras, and she was painted by every single artist. Not bad for me. That's a shock. I was generated e each art, I, and I was thinking, which which artist do I know more? Which artist do I know more? I want to see more. These are some selected effects. If you would like to see the process, the the process. Uh, if I generate such a warhol and the first, pa I don't like the first patch, and I regenerate it and I generate it again, and then I like one and say, okay, let's work on this one. I say, okay, I, okay, I say, okay, I see warhol, I feel warhol, I feel the, this artist, and I will getting to this point. I would not say that an artist is uh, the one who stands behind those pictures. It's more of an art director. We turn into a, an, an art, art director. We, we we have to know as if we wanted to explain to the live person what you want to paint. We have to understand that person to understand how they would understand what we tell tell them. Each of the employees um, I have is the same. We have to understand every person. You can say the one sentence that everybody else everybody will be imagining something else. So I have to learn everybody. It helps me with learning AI. I need to give self certain prompts. Prompts I have to fail at several times, but the things that do not work give me certain information. Here, it's the last bigger thing uh, which I would like to I would talk about to talk to you about liquidating the uh, job pos job positions and the artists will have it harder. This is not future. This is al already what's happening. There are several things which I didn't include in here, but the one competition was already won by an artist who generated the work in AI and he won the competition. He won the first place while he was competing against people who really worked several days or weeks over their works to to make them perfect and to for, to, to, to win that contest and they lost with a person who generated their work in one one second and that person gets an award and what then and he said, they say you can do this and i said why i did I break some point of the of the rules and regular terms of and conditions not really and now, so now the terms of and conditions are being updated. You cannot use AI in such um, competitions. However, before I show it to you, two words about how what does it look like from the legal perspective? Who has the right to those images? Because you should think about that. Can I use com this commercially, for example? Is that mine? The truth is, yes, this is fine, and I can sell it. I can print it, and I can say that I sell the portraits of that actress in, in accordance with the law. It's not that some, it's something I've done, but it's something I can do. The trick is all those things at once, uh, the license for each of those software, of the, each of the software, yes, you have the full commercial right to that, do what you want, but at the same time, you have the, you give the license to all the people in this planet, on this planet. So in a way, you have that. When when I write, when I will send you this presentation, you can sell those um, images too. But I cannot do anything with that because I give you a license by generating this image, which is a bit crazy. But it is. Um, it does not exist in any other domain so far. There were no such solutions, so it's a totally new thing. And people might not still understand what is going on, how to see that. And there are also already first cases, precedences. Some people sued other people, and the, the first uh, court cases have, be, have been settled with some uh, court re re resolutions in the United States. And they will be treated I think it's it's called the precedent uh, precedent in the legal uh, li legal lingo. Yes, all the all the future cases will be solved in the same way in the future, so that the research does, does not need to be had, uh, does not need to be done. So AI is treated like a, like a photo camera. I'm buying the the camera. I'm taking the photo. The photo is mine. Here I'm also pressing enter, and what what I got is mine. I created that. However. The license of those the software maybe there will be ones without the license, but so far all of them are with the license. It forces me to license that to to everybody. So if I don't want somebody to have the rights or to sell it or to use it by themselves, I need to somehow hide myself uh, with generating this, and I can do it because there are systems like 
algorithms like uh, Disco Diffusion. And Disco Diffusion is some, we're, we're using a Google Cloud, but we generate everything locally. So we're p paying for the computing power of Google and nobody sees our things before we show them. So, so here the situation looks different. But with mid-journey on with stable diffusion, so two things that we're using, everything that we do are automatically go into a gallery. So everybody can see it, they can see what we do, they can copy it, they can do various stuff with this. Mid-journey offers, for example, that if you have enterprise plan, we have uh, our own challenge channel to which nothing has access, nobody has access. I can still, I still give to, uh, this work to every this license to everybody, but they don't see it. So it's um, circumventing uh, this rule. We are here. At some point, I started to think. Okay, I had my game. I had my um, fun. I painted everything. Everything looks perfect. But if I wanted to use it in production, in our professional production, let's say the game costs millions of zlotys, and we have a lot of. Um, job positions, we have uh, IT programmers, uh, that such some costs would be nice to be reduced. For example, we would get one more, I don't know, one more programmer and and cut down on certain uh, positions. Of course, you think about those things when you're um, a manager. And we are creating a very specific game, a dark one in a, in a world of feudal Japan, but it's not a world uh, is reflects medieval Japan one to one. It's our fantasy, something where people will feel they they would know where they are based on our architecture, but the buildings are built where the Japanese would not want to put them normally, and it, it's all just to build an interesting world or a place uh, where nobody that nobody visited in a video game. So I was wondering how the the ideas that had over the last two years in my head how it would be made by AA. I had many f ideas for the locations and I had time to sit down and I was generating. And I will give you some examples now. Generally, it worked like this. I really got into it for two whole days, including evenings until late night, sitting and generating. And I generated about two and a half thousand images, out of which I selected, I think, about 250. I think it will be written here. Our production, you works like this. It's not that the concept art should work like, it should not be one-to-one. -one. It should be a strong inspiration how it should, what it should look like in terms of color palette, in terms of co composition, how big the building should be, just to find more the direction rather than to have concretely something and tell, uh, let's uh, reflect something one-to-one. -one. Would do not work like that. For the, what was created here is an ideal solution for me. So now let's see. Assuming that an artist gets 8,000 Polish lotus per month, this is somebody, let's say, between junior and mid, a, a regular artist who gets about, about that money. It got 400 Polish lotus per day. If we assume we have 20 working days per month, and I assume that one such image that you have seen would be created over four days. With my feedback uh, in between, that would be four days, plus minus, more or less, that's, the, we created a lot of stuff, so this is ca calculable. Four days is 1,600 zlotys, if one day is 400. So 250 images will be 1,000 days. 1,000 days will be 400,000 for zlotys. So if I employ a person, within over 1,000 days that I do not have because I have to complete my production area, over 1,000 days he will prepare for me 400, he will prepare 250 images for me and he, it will cost me 400,000 zlotys. 
Mid journey costs 200 poly zlotys per month. This subscription that I have, one image gets rendered in one minute. These are not not seconds because it gets upscaled. You wait for a while. It wants maybe bigger pictures. And as I said, I was sitting and on the weekend and 250 images. There were 2,500 images and. 250 images, you can assume that they were created over two days and I used up my whole computing hours. So the hours of for calculate, for computing, which I've, I used every, did my whole two months subs, uh, subscription because I was just hitting enter, 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 change the word enter, enter like a maniac. But so let's say I, I used up all my computing powers, power, and it cost me exactly that. So I, ha I have them, those pixels in two days, and I have 200 polyzolotes. So should I employ somebody to make those pictures for me? Hmm. I mean, we and AI, we get along together very well. He understands very well what I mean. So you can see that. This is um, both the advantage and a certain problem. There is a man which is somewhere on the web. I tried to record it, but I lost it somewhere in the depths of the web. Somebody wrote that if the customers need to precisely tell what they require, we are safe because they will never generate anything purposeful because clients, ca customers can never tell what they want. So they would still need artists who would be using those tools. Maybe, maybe that's the, uh, that's the way. But when I'm looking at this image to image, I can see uh, like homemade specialists who will be drawing a, a stick man uh, with a cap and with a backpack in five minutes on a piece of paper and then stable diffusion, diffusion would generate uh, some some beautiful character and they will say oh you see how i how well i did it and this is problematic when i said i read i i deleted two job positions that means two people will not get that job because I will employ somebody else. Somebody else will get that job, and there's you can. It, it shows you there's a certain shift. I would compare it to the situation of a taxi of taxi drivers of the Uber or Bolt, and you know you have, like the taxi taxi drivers are there. They say why why don't I have customers? No strike. Whereas this is not the right way. In my as I feel it, you have to understand those tools, and it's worth to learn that tools, and it's difficult because. I feel I am a bit of a researcher. It's enough that I I turn my eye away for one month and everything is totally different. Even this lecture will not be will not be up to date in three months because everything will look like differently. Look how much the faces improved over the three months. So what next? What will happen next? At some point, will it will get to a certain level of perfection. We will get exactly what we need, almost without any errors. And the number of the things that look so-so will decrease and decrease. And finally, the people who cannot even properly put in, into the words what they what they wish, the output of those words would uh, would be OK. I mean, it would not be gibberish. And another thing that's looming on the horizon, which is which I think over um, was uh, um, announced by Meta a few days ago, the performer Facebook is text to video, make a video. That's the name of it. And this is some film. It, it looks well, uh, not very well, but on the left hand side is a prompt. A dog wearing a super heel outfit with a red cape flying through the sky. This is not a static image. This is a flying dog. Now you can see certain reflections in the in the. Oh, you can see the a teddy bear painting a portrait. So now, if you take, the, take into account this example with faces, how they 
got sort of distorted uh, uh, several months ago. Now you can see something which is really horrible. It, uh, it makes no sense. You can you can really have fun with it. But what will happen in three months? AI is learning very fast, much faster than we do. It um, it, it spends its uh, this whole adolescence. It does not get old. It get it's it's it can get your whole knowledge, the whole knowledge you could have in your life within minutes. So where can it go with it? These are the first samples. So when I see something like this, I know that I I could I would be able to write anything and it will get generated. If I I would want a truck, a, a model of a car, a chase a scene, a chase scene, uh, it will happen. And at some point it will be so okay. I, Am I supposed to end? Yes, maybe one more thing I will show you. Earlier, we were talking about image to image that we can do certain, let's say some stupid even drawing, some sketch, some photography, some, some building, and we can ask the AI to take this image and do something with it. Here somebody did some something very interesting. He called it creature test and I'll show you I'll tell you how it was done there's a software which is called absent it's it's not related to AI but it's a software which follows pixels very well and it allows for example it allow, if I have a video of myself walking and I can draw um, a, a, an additional layer, a, a additional layer of a cartoon character let's say in, in in Photoshop and it text it will texturize me and my my body will drive the pictures that I draw drew in order for that to be ideal I would have to for example when I'm changing legs I would have to change the sketch for the next one the this AI allows for that and this allows you for very illustrative animated pictures so what did the guy do he took a photo of himself and he's standing in front of all of this and he decided okay generate a, a monster here he wrote so prom prompter uh, this or that sort of monster with uh, and he generated an image and this image is well sort of well um, fitted fitted to his body and he put that in the absent on on himself of course there are mi mistakes there but it's a test Can you imagine now how expensive such effects would be if we would want to do them in the old school way? If you wanted to do it, oh, you can see the guy and the generated image, even some trans transparent elements. I don't know, for me, this is crazy. And at no cost at all, absent is free of charge and Arch, half of the solutions, AI solutions, are free of charge too. That costs nothing. You can generate things. Sometimes you have a limit how much you can generate within a month. And if you want more, you can pay. You, you can pay uh, for uh, for subscription. But what is 200 slots per month if you are working with uh, computer graphics? That will make allow you to make not eight jobs a month, but 100 jobs a month. It's 100 is not for, it's not incredible. The customer wants this. Yes, I'm sending you the sketches. Which one you like? Yes, this one. Okay, there you go. The big one. Do you want a big one? Upscale AI buy, and it's ready. 2,000 slots. Enter your account. It took me about 15 minutes. Boom, etc. etc. And that's all, folks. I hope that you learned something interesting for you. If you have some questions, you can maybe ask them, or maybe you better catch me uh, outside on in the corridor. And that's it. That's all, folks. Thanks again for coming in such a great number. I'm really shocked. Okay, that's it. Any questions? The, this guy sitting there, the, the the background. No, this image was created two years ago. Uh, to, to make the long story short, when we were do, doing real-time works, if we were doing cinematics, uh, 
uh, teasers for computer games, we knew already that we want to make our own game, but we knew that for the needs uh, of the first pitching of uh, to investors, we need to have uh, the range of, of, of arts to present that idea. So two years before, two years before we started to invest to, for individual people to offer from our mm, team to produce such a thing. Oh, you don't see it, huh? No, this is not generated. It's painted by our uh, in-house artist, Karolina Valiuka. And we have more of those arts, but, all, but I must tell you, five minutes and I will have a sim similar one. I can add to this one, I can add this, and ask table diff diffusion, what if maybe the sky should be more orange, or maybe burning village behind his back, and you will have the effect. So, yeah, really, the question is when I will need that, and then I will do the prompts. I did those strong prompts in two days, and since that I didn't even need it. I have so much material to process. Somebody has to model that now. Somebody has to s put that in order. More is not always better. That's why from out of 2,500, I, I selected 20, uh, 250, and I still think it's an overkill. For, for I, I mean, you know, for, we have, we have to be, you have to select concrete ideas. Let's say we have six arts with it with a cave, and let's select one. Yes, we we always have to go with the final one at the end of the day. I have a question: Is s s adding sound to image to images will also be created by music? For example, will also be created by artificial intelligence? That's a good question. At the moment, no. In half a year. Who knows? Let me tell you like this. I already heard um, pieces. There are plenty of pieces which I didn't say about AI, which are there, but they are still not developed. When it comes to music, well, it's good to say that so far, the algorithm which create music from prompts, uh, you know, they create uh, music which is not uh, not spectacular. Maybe the AI is listening to Spotify right right now, but there is an AI which works very well, and it's available for for everybody. It's somewhere in open source in GitHub, which works very well, which works very well with continuation of of some works. They say uh, you put in a piece of music and say continue that for the next ten minutes. It will it will keep. Vangelis is a Vangelis is a great uh, example because. Um, you know, you can. It works very well with the AI, so, and it it might occur that the second part of the of the um, of the work will that will be AI generated uh, will be so different that it might be a separate might be a separate piece. And it is it is a sh sort of a gray area. You can make the same things with vocals. The generators, the voice generators, the synth synthesizers, which are AI, are so good. That you have computer games, games that assume that okay, for the needs of the proto prototyping, in order to have something, please generate AI voices, and then we'll do a session, voiceover session with some actor, and we'll re record that once again. And at the end of the day, uh, two years go past, and it stays with the game because it's perfect. And they say, well, it it works well. Let's cut the cost. It's too expensive to get to get an actor. <coughs> I can play myself. At the end of the day, if you have one person in a studio who know who can play with the voice, uh, show emotions, the, it can play all the characters because we can add, add any voice character on it. You not only using pitch, you can um, uh, you can change the the texture of the voice. The soft Uber duck. I didn't know about this soft. And I see you have all the movies, all the all the actors, all the animations, like an absurd list. And it's, I was in shock. You put in some text, you read a person from the Guardians of the Galaxy, or Luke Skywalker, and he speaks it at, as if it, it was him. I do not have a problem how he said that. And some of the uh, programs, some of the software allows you gives you certain allows you to give certain hints to AI. That's a say it in an aggressive way, and there are special tools which make it easier. AI is so it's that if you do not put a, a, if you don't make a good tool out of this, people are sort of cannot get over that 
the first AI I used was Midjourney, and in Midjourney you have to write things. It is a bit as if um, you were writing a program, prog some programming language, AR uh, dash. You have to learn all those things that you have to, you can add to get better effects. After several months, somebody comes to and says, "This is stupid. Let's let's make an interface. They will just slide us. You'll be able to paint it." Uh, with a brush, you will not have to. You will not have to uh, put in the words. You can. You will be able to paint over some, and you you get those interfaces. And the fusion is so uh, in, developed right now that you can do everything. Jakob, sorry, it's your your 15 minutes past time, and you're talking and talking. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Let's move. Just move somewhere to the smaller room because we need to continue here. Uh, big applause. Thank you. 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 Th